Today we're going to be learning about the book Mouse Paint. So we're going to do a read aloud about the book Mouse Paint and then we're going to look at how our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue make secondary colors green, orange, and purple when we mix them together. So we just need our paper, some crayons and markers, and using paint if you would like as well. So for my setup here, I have my 9 by 12 piece of paper. And the first thing I want us to use is a Sharpie. You can also use a black crayon or color pencil. We'll do a dot, and I want you to go all the way around in a circle almost to create this shape. And that dot, you can make it a little bit bigger, and that's going to be the nose of our mouse. So you want to have these three a little bit separated. So again, the same thing, just go all the way around like a balloon and come back to that dot. And we'll do it one more time. You can always turn your paper to help you as well, but don't worry about them being exact. Once you filled in and got those noses and all three done, what you can then do is give each of your mice their eyes. You can come up with your own eyes or you can just do a simple dot like this for each. Then think about the tail you might want to create. It could be zigzag or be curly cute or extra wavy. And finally, we're going to make their ears. So you'll just do almost like C's, like a backward C and a regular C, or little loops to make our ears. Once you've created those, we're going to create what colors go in between our primary colors. So I want you to make like a little splat. So all you're going to do is create a line that's wavy and you meet back to where you started. So again, you're just going to start a line that's a wavy line. Go all the way around and meet back where you started. Excellent. So now we have our three mice and we have our three spots of color. Do we remember what our primary colors make? So let's think about that because we get to do that today. On here, I'm going to be using my tempura cakes. There's another project that I have inside this video too as a second option, and that's where you can use regular paints. So the first one I'm going to do is start with our primary color red. And I'm just going to grab a little bit on my paintbrush and I'm going to paint my mouse red. So as you're doing this, I like to outline first and then fill it in. And you'll notice I didn't grab a lot of paint, but I can always go back and see how the paint just starts to slowly wake up. And that's how I can paint it just a little bit more. You never need to grab a lot of paint, just a little bit works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to use the red and see how it got a little dry there. I just added just a drop of water and it's going to spread that red really nice on my paper. So if you ever find that your color, your water turns really dark quickly right away, probably because you have a little too much paint on your brush. So I, you know, give it a nice little rinse. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my yellow. And so my yellow here was really dirty. Somebody had mixed the color on top of it. So all I'm doing is just kind of cleaning it up a little bit so I can find my yellow. There we go. See how nice and pretty that looks? All right. So now that I have my yellow, I'm going to put it on my mouse because it's so nice and clean at the moment and I don't want to clean my brush again yet. So I've got my yellow on my mouse as my primary color. And then I'm going to mix it with the red. 
what do you think it's going to make? It's starting to change. I can see it on here already. So I grab a little bit more. We made orange. That's right. When you mix red and yellow together, you make orange. So much fun. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush again. And now I'm going to work on my final primary color, blue. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, and I'm just adding a little bit more of my brush on here um, and water because it's really dry. It hasn't been woken up in a bit. So here I'm adding in. I don't need a lot of paint. You'll notice I go back and grab a little bit of water and a little bit of paint, and it works just nicely. All right, so just like we did last time, let's use that blue, and then we're going to paint it in this splat. Now that I have the blue, I'm gonna rinse my brush nicely again, and I'm gonna grab the yellow. And I'm just making sure I appear yellow, and now I'm gonna paint the yellow on top of the blue. And right before our eyes, can you see what it's starting to turn into? It's green. So right now, I have a lot of yellow on there, so it looks a little yellow green. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and put it on top, too. And now it looks a lot more like a darker green, doesn't it? If you put a ton of blue on it, it's going to look more teal, and that's okay. All right, we're down to our last one, our red and our blue. What does that make? So I'm gonna start off by grabbing my red. I'm gonna put that on here first. And I'm gonna rinse my brush and wipe it on the side of my cup. And now I'm gonna grab some blue. And let's see what we make. We make purple. How are your purples all coming along? So this works really well with marker too. You can always do this project with marker and make it. And then now that we have our colors, our red and yellow makes orange, red and blue makes purple, and yellow and blue makes green, you can kind of decorate however you want for the back of the background of your paper. So I just like to take my brush, I already have some colors on it, and I'm just gonna add some of those dots onto the back of my paper. So it looks nice and pretty like a color wheel, right? All right, so I grab and I'm just gonna do some little dots like this. You take your time, just remember to always rinse your brush before you grab a new color. Another option I have is to create our mouse paint using our liquid tempera paint. So in my other example, I used our cake tempera cakes, um, which are just a dried version of this, but I love using this type of paint too. So depending on being on a cart or wherever you are, this is another option um, when you're in the classroom. So the first thing is I just want you to grab the red and just kind of splatter it all over on one corner of your piece. So just like how we had our mice being our primary colors, we're gonna start off with our primary colors first. So make sure when we use this type of paint, you really need to make sure you rinse your brush because even the slightest amount, like you could see on my brush here, 
is already turning a little orange. So the moment that this paint touches the red, you can see that it makes a beautiful orange, which is wonderful. But I don't want us to cover all of that nice yellow because we want to show how we mix the colors because the red and the yellow makes an orange. So I'm just kind of spreading around what I have and I'm gonna rinse my brush again and go back and grab some more of that yellow. And I'm going to put it down a little bit more here too. So I'm spreading it a little bit more around my paper and then I'm going to um, go in with what color do you think would be the best to go with yellow. We already did yellow and red, so what's another color that we mix yellow with? Blue, that's right. So blue is really dark, and that's why I went and did that after my yellow. So the more blue and yellow I have, the more darker green it's going to look. But the more yellow on my paper with the blue, it's going to be more of a lighter green. So here, my yellow and blue makes a gorgeous green. And when I'm rinsing my brush, I'm pushing it down on the bottom and then I'm wiping it on the edge here. I'm gonna grab that blue and I'm gonna place it on this bottom corner here, as you can see. And I'm just slowly working my way around. The nice part about this type of paint is I use a lot of it right away and it doesn't take a lot to spread it around. And I don't have to worry about rinsing my brush and putting all that paint in my cup. So I'm grabbing, just like we've done throughout everything, I'm gonna put the blue all around of where I want my purple to go. So right now I'm just kind of smearing it all around. And the next thing I'm going to do, cause I already did my red and yellow to make orange and I already did made my green with yellow and blue. We're going to make our purple. So I'm gonna grab some red and I'm gonna mix it around here. And now you can see this purple coming together. So some of my purple that's on the blue looks like a deep indigo color. And some of the purple that has a little bit more red to it is a reddish purple. Something that you might see when you have your crayons. So you can see how I've slowly just filled up all of these edges. And what I'm going to do is where I started with my red, I'm just gonna rinse my brush, grab the little leftover of my red, or play around with some areas that maybe I'm like, eh, I'm gonna make my green extended a little bit more, and just clean up those spots before we move on. Once you're done, we're gonna set this on the dry rack. And we're gonna take our cups to the sink, rinse those out, as well as, you know, just put our brushes where they need to go. And then go and grab a wipe. And you'll notice that the wipe, one little baby wipe, can clean up so much. So already I'm just using one wipe and I'm just wiping up all of that mess that I had on my table. And then you could even grab paint off of your own fingers with it. So using the same one wipe, I'm able to just wipe off the paint that I might have gotten on my fingers from picking up my paper or um, from anywhere else. Once you're done with that, throw that in the garbage. And just as a reminder, make sure you take your cup to the sink. So all you're going to do is dump the water out, give it a little rinse, and put the brushing cup where they go. I also have these little templates of our mice. So you're gonna use the three, and I want you to just go around and do your best with cutting out the mice. I find it's easier if I break them up into smaller pieces like you see here. And then as you're cutting, remember that your scissors in your hand always are pointing forward and away from you and it's your other hand that turns the paper. So you can see that my scissors haven't really moved. They're just opening and closing, but my left hand is turning the paper. So again, start off where it's easiest for you, but your scissors just always stay straight and the other hand moves the paper around. 
you're going to get really good at cutting the more practice you do. And as you're cutting, you're using more inside of your scissors. You're not really using the very tiny part in the front unless you need that for smaller pieces. So as I'm cutting, you'll notice I like to keep my desk area clean as I work. You may not do it that way and that's okay too. So what I'm doing is I put my done pieces on the right and I have my scraps on the left. This way I don't accidentally throw away one of my mice, right? So when you are done cutting your different mice, I want you to recycle your scraps and put your scissors away and take out a glue stick. Once your project's dry, what you'll do is you'll take those three mice that you cut out and I want you to use your glue stick to stick them on your paper. When we're using our glue stick, remember you want to not use a lot of it. So you only uh, turn the dial just a little bit to get it sticky enough, but not to have a ton come out. And we're going to place our mice on our paper in three different areas. So think about the ones and how they mixed. You can put them right on your primary colors or you can put them a little bit in between, but we wanna spread them out so that way you can see the colors that we are using. Remember our primary colors made our secondary colors. So here I'm putting one on my red, one on my yellow, and one on my blue. Once they're on there, I want you to take out a black crayon or even a black, black colored pencil. Make sure that you twist your cap, uh, your glue stick closed and put the cap on. And when we're using our crayon, I want you to use those that detail of it to make the tail and the nose. So just go in and draw any type of tail you're thinking about. It could be a wavy one, it could be a zigzaggy looking one, whichever you are thinking. So add that to all three of them. And this is why we are waiting for our paint to dry. Finally, when you're done, just make sure that your name and your teacher code is on the back. So you can flip it over and make it as big as you want or not. I'm writing TC for your teacher code, but remember we all know what our teacher code is. These are my two examples from the video. I hope you had fun.